Here in Europe, allegations of bribery and corruption within the highest echelon of lawmaking have sent shockwaves across the continent. The arrest of Eva Kaili, a senior vice president of the European Parliament on suspicion of accepting money in exchange for giving Qatar good publicity, has raised questions about just how much influence the Gulf state may wield on the continent. It has also shone a light on the country's business ties with Europe. So let's take a look then at that relationship. Last year, Qatar's exports to the EU amounted to almost 7 billion euros. The vast majority of that, unsurprisingly, was gas. Going the other way, the EU sold goods worth around 8.5 billion euros to Qatar. The main exports there were machines, turbines and electronic equipment. Qatar has also been investing heavily in a range of European businesses. The country holds a quarter of British carrier IAG. It has a 17% stake in Germany's Volkswagen and it's also a major shareholder in Swiss mining giant Glencore and Spanish energy conglomerate Iberdrola. Those investments suggesting the country is setting its sights on a future with less reliance on gas. For more on this, we can speak now to André Wolf. He's a researcher at the Centre for European Policy, a think tank. Hi, André. Lovely to see you. Now, you have conducted extensive research on Qatar's business ties with Europe. Based on what you have found, how big an influence do you think Qatar wields on the continent? Well, what you can certainly say is that Qatar's economic engagement in Europe is very comprehensive and widespread among countries and sectors. They're not just investing in finance or certain high-tech sectors. Um, they also invest in soft sectors like fashion and sports. And in many cases, they, in their investments reach a critical level that allows them to exert a strategic influence on certain key players and sectors. And at the same time, of course, there's also their role as the second largest supplier of LNG, which will remain a bridge technology for Europe uh, in its quest for achieving its energy transformation. So in relation to their size, their influence is quite remarkable, even though it does not reach the level of criticality we see, for instance, in case of China. Exactly. Just as you say, Qatar is a really small country. It's very rich, of course. But why do you think it is so interested in boosting its, its image in Europe? What exactly does it want? I see two main interests of Qatar in Europe. First, I think they see investment in Europe's economy as a means to hedge against the price risks they are facing in the LNG business. So they use Europe as an opportunity to diversify their foreign resources and foreign revenues, which is essential for the Qatari government to maintain the generous support to their local population. While at the same time, there's obviously also the desire to increase their reputation and recognition in the international arena through engagement in popular activities like sports, for instance, possibly with a long-term goal to conclude something like a comprehensive free trade agreement with the EU. OK, so based on all that, I'd love to end with a personal question. When you heard news of this corruption scandal, what was your gut response? Were you as surprised as the rest of us were? Honestly, I was very surprised because I would have expected them to choose ways that are less risky and less obviously illegal in increasing their political influence in Europe, especially given the allegations they already faced in the past surrounding the awarding of the World Cup. I can only imagine that sort of underestimated the role of control mechanisms and a critical public in the European political system. But of course, we need to wait for the further investigations will tell. Fascinating stuff. André Bolt from the Centre for European Policy, thank you so much. You're welcome.